Okay, guys, we got a 2005 Toyota Matrix. Uh, and it's no start. No crank, no noise, nothing. So we'll get in. And I don't fall dark in here. We'll grab our key. It is a standard. Make sure we're in, in neutral. Put my foot all the way down on the clutch. Just absolutely mat it as hard as I can. And nothing. Now we do have a second key, but on these, if you have a security issue, not only will that light go out like that, you'll have a cranking no start. And this, as you can see, is not up. So first things I do is go out under the hood. We'll give this a pop. Yeah, da, da. Uh, I'm going to need two hands. So the first things you want to check obviously is to do with the battery. You know, make sure both the terminals are tight. You check the voltage, do a load test. If you don't have a carbon pile load tester, all you can do or what you can do that's equivalent is just put a voltmeter on there and then just hop in the vehicle. You know, turn your blower on high, turn your high beams on, uh, turn your rear defrost on, turn on a whole bunch of loads. And if your voltage on your multimeter doesn't drop any, then hey, you know at least that you should have enough to do something, particularly on one of these older guys, right? You know, if you have a brand new vehicle and, you know, the battery gets down to say 11 volts, you might not hear anything. But one of these here, if you've got a weak battery, it'll turn over slowly. We don't hear anything at all. I've already checked the battery. Battery is more than good enough to make this thing crank. So next thing I do is I go to look at the starter, at least this one here is right there, nice and easy to get to. We do see it's shiny, why? Because we just put this in uh, a few months ago. So we go, first things we do, we check kinda the connections, you know, mistakes can happen. Sure enough, everything's nice and tight. I don't suspect anything wrong in there. Uh, we check the plug-in connector for the solenoid, it feels nice and good. So. Uh, before I go with any craziness on something like this, it just seems, since it's right there, it just seems easiest to go with the basic old school method. So I'm going to unplug that connector and then I'll bring it from there. All right, now that the connector is unplugged, um, definitely needed two hands for that. Nothing, nothing extravagant. You just kind of give it a little pull and push the little tab and it comes out. So uh, I probably won't be able to show that on camera, but the terminal is in good shape. It's not corroded, it's not spread, it's nothing crazy like that. So all I'm gonna do to start off with, just because I'm by myself at the moment, I got a jumper wire. And before we do that, we double check that because it's the standard, we're in neutral and our brake is up. The key is off. We do not want this to start. We just want to check, is it going to crank? So uh, I might need two hands for this. Either way, you probably won't be able to see anything. So let me throw this in there and I'll give you a shot of it once I'm done. Well, you might not be able to see much of that, but it did get the alligator clip in there. It's a little hard to find the actual terminal. And of course you make sure that it's not gonna touch anything metal. So all we're gonna do is just touch this to battery positive. Perfect. So that tells us a whole bunch of things. Not only is our starter good, but it also tests the, the main positive wire, the, the heavy gauge current carrying wire for the starter. We don't even have to look at that. We know that's good as well. We also know our motor's not seized. And <laughs> don't forget that check. It wouldn't be the first time someone's put a new starter in a seized engine. And I tell you, that's an awkward conversation with the boss. Yeah, don't forget to make sure the engine physically turns over before you put one in. But anyways, so uh, now, Presumably, our issue is there's no power getting to, well, we know there's no power getting to that solenoid wire. Um, 
we uh, I didn't do a drag test on on the terminal it could be spread but it sure don't look spread it feels nice and solid when I plug it in so I'm gonna go with there's no power getting there so what I can do at this point get my jumper wire out of there I'm gonna plug the connector back in yeah, you guys probably won't be able to see anything well, I can't see anything so <laughs> Don't imagine you guys can see anything. Killing. Oh, <laughs> Helps if I go for the right. There we go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the wiring diagram. Uh, I'm gonna look to see where the starter relay is. And you know what? To test the wire down to the starter, I'll probably just jump her the starter relay. Uh, if she cranks, then we know that we don't even have to worry about that wire, right? Just sometimes simple things. There's one of the things I love about automotive diagnosing is there's no definitive right way to do with things. On certain vehicles, it might be easier to do this route and another vehicle might be easier to do another route. You just kind of do what feels right for the vehicle in front of you, right? For me being by myself, I could put a, if I got a vehicle, if I got a buddy, and the starter's nice and easy to get to, what I'll do is I'll put a test light on the big positive wire while it's cranking. Hey, it's lit, so we know that's good. Then I'll put another light on the solenoid wire, stuff like that, but I don't have a buddy harder to do that on the solenoid wire for this starter. So I'm just gonna try some jump ring. So let's go to the wiring diagram. Let's figure out where stuff lives. Okay, so we got our wiring diagram. Now, anything like this, I always like to start by looking at the wiring diagram. It gives you a real good indication, uh, an overall view of the circuit and all the players involved. Uh, particularly these non-OE styles, right? You can just do it so quick once you get a hang of looking at wiring diagrams and then you can get a game plan. So we have our starter down here, we have our battery, we have our starter relay, we got our ignition switch, we got our clutch pedal switch, and we got a starter cut relay. So on this system here, it does look like our anti-theft is capable of disabling cranking. Now, I don't think that's a problem in this particular vehicle because our security telltale went out. However, by looking at our wiring diagram, we now know that this is a possible player, something to keep in the back of the mind. So on the control side of the starter relay, we got the ground, which is a full-time ground, and then our power side goes through our controls. So we have a fuse, which goes through our ignition switch. When we're in start, the power comes through. Then it comes to our clutch pedal switch. When the switch is engaged, then the power will continue. And then it comes to our starter cut relay that under normal circumstances, it's normally closed, power will continue on. However, if the anti-theft isn't satisfied, it'll engage the relay, which will open the circuit. So say if you're in start and you got the clutch pedal in, power will come through, anti-theft says no, then you know what, open circuit, it won't carry on. But if all three of these are satisfied, then you will get power all the way up here, you should get the starter relay to close, and then power should come down and engage the starter solenoid and engage the starter. So I always like starting, you know, when you get a no crank, I like going after directly to the starter. Rather than checking these fuses, we just check right here. If we have power right here, we know these fuses are good. We don't have to look at them. Likewise, we should, really easy to check right here, we should have a ground. Then we don't have to worry about that at all. Now we can check here. If we see a power here, then we know our ignition switch is good, we know this fuse is good, we know our clutch pedal switch is good, and we know that this is happy. Um, likewise, what we can do is we can just jumper the relay all together. Uh, and you know what, you, without even testing to see if you have power, right? If you jumper this relay and it cranks, not only will you know in one step will all your powers be good, but you'll know that the wiring all the way down to the starter is good as well. And you can forget about the entire load side of the relay all together in one step. That's why I like looking at relay 
or uh, wiring diagrams, right, and going after relays. So um, likewise, if we do that and it cranks, then hey, that's good. If we find we have uh, a ground here, then awesome, we don't have to worry about that. If we find we have power here, then hey, we're, we're looking at a relay. Um, if we find we don't have power here, then we can go after kind of these other ones. Um, we can pick, a, you know, rather than going after this, because this says behind upper right side of dash, which is probably pretty buried, you know, the clutch pedal switch is pretty easy to test. We could always just jump for that if we wanted to. Um, you know, by going to the clutch pedal switch on the red wire, we can easily see if our ignition switch is working as well as the fuse, right? So what we could do is we could unplug it, we could put our test light on this red wire, and if we go to the crank position and our test light lights, then we know our ignition switch is good, we know our fuse is good, and we don't have to go after this because the ignition switch is going to be a little more involved to get to. So these are our players. Um, as of right now, as long as this is accessible, this is our easiest spot to do all our testing at. Um, otherwise, our clutch pedal position switch is pretty easy to test at. So uh, let's go back to the vehicle and let's dig this guy out. So unfortunately, the starter relay in this guy is in an unfortunate place. You pull this little cover here, this little pocket, and in there is the interior fuse box. Uh, we got a bunch of connectors on the top and there's a bunch of connectors on the bottom. There's some fuses on the bottom. Way back there, if you can see that, there's kind of a purpley blue relay. That's our starter relay. Now, uh, in a perfect world, if that were just, you know, say in an underhood fuse box, just right on top, we could put one of our little fuse tester buddies in there and it gives you all the little pins on the outside and you could test it right there. Quick, easy way of testing all the different inputs to the relay you know you wouldn't have to worry about testing the the clutch pedal because you, you basically see does it have its power does it have its ground for the coil side of the relay does it have a power feed you wouldn't have to check any fuses you can check all that right at the relay but this one's hard to get to so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding out which of those connectors has which wire kind of testing them all individually but while we're on the subject of sticking with kind of old school basic testing first, we can check, especially since that's a bit of a pain, we can check that uh, clutch pedal switch. Get you a shot way up yonder that harness right there. <clears throat> so I can unplug it and I got a jumper made up and I can throw that in there. <laughs> uh, let's move that out of the way so I don't stab myself. Oh man, I've done that so many times on back probes. So let's see if we can't get that unplugged. Because wouldn't that be wonderful if that were it? Now, of course, with all these vehicles, you always want to make sure that there's no aftermarket floor mats preventing you from pushing that down far enough to actually make contact. <clears throat> In this case, of course, we don't. I'll try putting you down. Hopefully you can see that. So we're just gonna gingerly put that in the front, and this is just a contact switch. There we go. So of course being a standard and me being outside, definitely want to make sure we're neutral. Definitely want to make sure park breaks up. We grab our key. We throw that in the ignition. So on. Okay, nada. So what that tells us is that tells us for sure that our clutch pedal position switch is not the fault. Now that's not to say you couldn't have a wiring issue, right? We didn't check any of that, but it's just a super quick check, just to jump for that wire to see, is it the clutch pedal switch? Because, you know, every time you're in this vehicle, when you're diagnosing things, you always wanna look for what gets disturbed. Well, that clutch pedal position switch gets disturbed every single time you push that clutch pedal, right? So they do fail. 
quick little check now we go after the relay the wires to the relay and in the meantime i'll just leave that in there that way i don't have to worry about pushing the clutch pedal so we managed to get lucky and found a couple good diagrams of our fuse box <laughs> can't always do that uh, put them together to help us out and they are kind of mirror flipped if that makes sense so what i mean by that is for the top uh, this side right here is towards the front of the vehicle and the bottom this side is also towards the front of the vehicle so you can kind of think of this right here as like the firewall um, on the top uh, over here is towards us for the bottom over here is towards us and then both right here that's kind of to the outside of the vehicle so thing that's really nice about this is not only does it label each connector but it also gives you the wire terminal numbers it's really easy to accidentally be on the wrong wire uh, not realize that you get thrown for wild goose chase so not only can we match up the wire colors but we can also match match up the wire numbers and be pretty confident we're on the right wire so going back to our wiring diagram our whole battery feed circuit comes to connector m our output to the starter is also on m our ground for the relay is on f and our whole turn on circuit is on l so uh L and M, thankfully, which are on the bottom, they should be pretty easy to get to, but F down here, F would not be easy to get to. Pretty buried. If we absolutely had to, we probably could, you know, uh, unplug a whole bunch of connectors, kind of get access to it. The problem with that is it'd be really difficult to know for sure you actually are on the right wire. You know, you can unplug it, kind of back probe it, then when you go to put it in, it, it might kind of fall out. It might accidentally kind of hit the next terminal over. So for now, we will leave F because it's pretty ugly. We're not going to ignore it, but looking back at our wiring diagram, we see it's a full-time ground. It, it does go to a bunch of other things. So if it were gone, you would expect other things to be acting up. Um, it's in an area that doesn't get disturbed. There's no switches involved. It, for right here, it's just a, a low amp situation. You know, a relay doesn't use very much. So chances are that's fine. Now, we're not assuming it's good, but what we can do is process of elimination. Uh, so we can check here if that's good. We'll check here. If that checks good, if this checks good, then the next thing we can go after the relay. If that checks good, then we know we have to look at the ground or an internal fuse box issue. But we only have to go after the uglies if we're forced to, right? Start with the easy stuff first, um, as well as the more likely stuff. Likewise, if we test here, and this does, if this, sorry, if this has a power in the start position, then we know all of this is good. We don't have to look at any of that. If we don't have power, then the next easiest thing to do is we can unplug our uh, clutch switch um, jumper we can test the red wire, go to the start position. If we have power there, then we know our ignition switch is good, as well as the fuse, uh, which would be nice because the ignition switch is going to be a bit of time involved to get to. So we can test that here. Now, if we don't have power here, but we do have power here, then we know we either have a wiring issue either here or a wiring issue here, or we have something uh, amiss with this mess. Only then would we ever have to worry about actually trying to dig this out and do any testing there. So for now, we're going to hope that's not the case. We hope that when we test here, we see power and we don't have to worry about that. So we'll be going after connector M and connector L. Both of those are on the bottom. So if we look right here, this is towards the firewall. Um, this would be towards us. This is towards the outside. So connector M is the first one the nice closest one, and then L is the next one in. If we look here, the wire to the starter is one, so that's right here. The battery feed is three, that's right here. And our turn on circuit, uh, L11, which is this one right here, which should be pretty easy to get to as well. So um, the battery feed, we'll just check that right there with the test light, uh, you know, incandescent test light. It, it should have good power the whole time then we won't have to worry about checking any fuses or anything. And then uh, connector one is going to the starter. We could manually power that, say with a power probe. If it cranks, then you know all that's good. Or the other thing we could do too, is we could just jumper the two, right? They're 
just adjacent to each other. The thing that's nice about that is with one quick little test, by jumping them, if it cranks, then you know the entire load side is good. You don't need to check any fuses, you don't need to check the starter, you wouldn't need to check anything. You'd know just by jumping those two wires that everything is good. So don't always ignore the simple solutions of just a simple jumper test. And then for this one right here, uh, probably easiest thing to do with that is we'll just put a back prober in there and hook a test light up to that and hold in the, the start position and see if that lights. If it doesn't light, only then would we have to actually go back and look at any of this stuff. But if this lights just fine, then we know all that's good and we can move on. So with that, let's go back to the vehicle. We'll go after connector M first and see what we see. Oh yeah, so hopefully you guys can see that, that white connector there, that's the one we're after. So I know you probably won't be able to see much of this. I can't really see anything. Oh, yes. All right, so we can see the black with red because we wanted the ones to the outside and that black wire right there, that's the one going to the starter. <laughs> so this is all kinds of awkward, but you see the green light, that's good. That means it's finding a path through the starter solenoid to ground. So let's give it a touch. Perfect. So then we don't have to worry about any of that. Now we have that that guy right there, that's our black with red. So that shows that supposedly that's a power. I don't trust logic probes for testing that. So let me get that hooked up with um, my test light. Well, so far the theme of this video has been kind of using basic old school tests, right? So why not, let's keep it going. Uh, you know, we jumper the starter out there to ensure that, hey, the starter works. Also that tells us that the main power feed to the starter, that's good. You know, this wire right here, we manually powered that. Sure, we used a power probe. We could have just used, you know, a jumper wire, but this is um, fused. So if there's any big problem, then kind of protects things a little bit, right? But we could have just used a jumper wire. And now what we want to check is the power feed coming to it. Now we saw that that light up red, but that's not necessarily to say that that's a good enough connection to close that starter solenoid, right? You might have uh, a bad connection, so it might be enough power getting to that for that power probe to register it as a power because it's unloaded, but you want to load test it, right? So we could put in a high amperage test light, not that thing, something bigger than that, a bulb, or why not just jumper the two, right? If we put this end in the full-time power, and this end going to the starter and she cranks, then you know it's capable of cranking. We're just bypassing the relay doing this. So anytime you're doing something like this, of course you wanna make sure without a shadow of a doubt that you know what you're doing. All right, that lets us know that's capable of starting the starter. There's no problem with that, uh, that power feed or the wire going to the starter. So I don't believe there's anything else in here that we care about. And let's plug that back in. If I can get that in there. Oh, that goes in that way. All right, so hopefully you can see that other white connector behind um, the 30 amp fuse there. So we'd be looking for that black wire on the end, um, opposite of the other black, and then the bluish wire. Let's try and get our back prober up in there. Okay, I believe we were successful. So I'm actually gonna switch my test light around. I'm gonna plug my test light into that, the end of that um, back prober, and then the other touch, the other end I'll touch to ground, because uh, I'm gonna need to also reach up and turn the key. Alrighty, we're in that back prober. Let's put the key up in the ignition. Okay, that's key on. And we'll go to start. Perfect. Now, 
back probers, you always have to not trust back probers, right? So if we didn't see that light, we would have to go up in there and make sure that we actually are making connection with our back prober. But since we did see it light, we know we made connection and we know that's good. So we know that our clutch pedal switch is good uh, because where the wiring to that is good because you know we got a jumpered. We know that our ignition switch is good, at least that portion of it. If the other portion of the ignition switch were bad, you'd still have it cranking. So the cranking circuit of that is good. That's all we care about for right now. We know that our starter cut relay out there, that's, we don't have to worry about that. Um, the only thing we haven't tested yet is that ground. Uh, it's a little ugly to get to. Um, and the relay and the fuse box. Those are our only players. So probably the easiest thing to do right now is I'm just gonna go after that relay. Now, you know, I, I've worked with so many people that when they're doing electrical stuff, the first thing they'll do is just swap relays. Uh, it, it's, it's never a relay. At least that's been my experience. I've seen some solid state relays go. I've seen some relays just get corroded because the whole fuse box is corroded. But I've never just, or that I know of, I've never seen a bad normal relay. Obviously the, the Honda main relays, they go all the time. So we'll make sure he's out of the ignition because we don't know what these connectors are for. But I think, I don't know, maybe I can get a screwdriver in there, a long one, and pry that up. I'll try that. Or maybe I can reach back there. Can I get to it? Oh, let's pull our back prober out. That out of the way, get that straight out of the way. All right, I'm gonna let you down because I don't know how I'm gonna get that out. All right, let's try this. Hopefully this works because I'm kind of kind of running out of time on this guy. Gotta get going on the other stuff. No, let's get at least that one connector out. Do do. Come on, you can do it. Oh, I think there we go. Another goofy connector. Alright, now can we get underneath the corner of that really? I think so. Perfect. Uh Okay, so we got a relay out. Uh, now, rather than trying to dig that other wire out, I'm just gonna test this relay. If it's good, then we gotta do some more digging. If it's bad, then, uh, hey, it's bad. Or otherwise at this point, I'll see if I can't find another relay, throw it in there and uh, see if it starts. Okay, so we got a relay out. And the way I have it hooked up, the power probe is on pins 85 and 86 of the coil side we're going to supply power in the ground and if it's a good relay the switch will close and my multimeter is hooked up to check the resistance of the two contacts so pins 30 and 87. so on a good relay as soon as i supply power this here should it should read 0.2 ohms because that's actually the resistance of the meter and my leads anything above that is a bad sign so here we go And we got 1.8 ohms. Do that again. 1.7. 1.7. That is not a good connection. Coincidentally, that might be enough to uh, click it over uh, the solenoid. Because keep in mind, this isn't uh, powering the actual the motor windings. This is just turning the um, activating the, the starter solenoid. 1.6. So this could be, this relay here could sometimes work, potentially, sometimes not. When I first looked at that, it kind of looks like it's getting a little bit better. 
as it's being clicked. So it might be the sort of thing, if you did this over and over and over and over and over, you might actually get a click out of it. Now, let's see if we give it some taps. When I first checked this, I, was, I pulled it out of the car before I had a chance to do the clip of it, the video, I was getting around nine ohms. So that is not a good relay. Um, let me clear this out. I'll pop that cover off and let's just see if we see anything. So I popped the cover off. Now, hopefully that's focusing. I know this camera doesn't like to focus too much too close, but it has definitely gotten burnt before. So what causes that is you get a couple times where it doesn't make a good enough connection and then you get high resistance. High resistance equals high heat and then it burns up. So absolutely a bad relay. Well, how is this for Murphy's Law? Unbelievable. You know, I went through all my relays that I had uh, and you know what? All the ones that were of a similar style, they all had the 87A contact. We were looking for one that didn't. Now, I thought about just grinding it down, breaking it off, would have worked just fine, no harm, no foul. But then I did find one, I had one that didn't have the 87A. So I just threw it in that night, went to see, okay, we got just about everything else, it should start, right? I was fully expecting it to start and it didn't. Now, I didn't check the ground to that, but you know what, it's a full-time ground and it's just, uh, it's only powering the switch side of this, right? Well, you know, presumably it's powering other stuff too, but that's not a huge current demand. So what are the chances that ground is bad? I didn't really see anything being disturbed. So I figured it's probably safe just to throw it in there. Hindsight, I probably should have checked it because it's an old used relay. So <laughs> yeah, no wonder why it didn't start. What are the chances? Uh, got the same kind of setup, got the multimeter on the continuity setting. Uh, this would be the switch side, so pins 30 and 87. So when we close the coil and the switch closes, or when we uh, energize the coil, the switch closes, there will be continuity between 30 and 87, this thing should be. So I got the power probe ground on one side of the coil, I'm going to put power on the other side. It doesn't matter which way you do this, it'll, it'll close or it'll make a magnetic field and close the switch no matter what. But, see if we can't get that to, to stay on there. We got no noise. It is kind of Closing the, the switch, we can hear some some noise once I get it's clicking, but there's no continuity there. Now I know what you're thinking. What if it does matter? Well, if you think it matters, let me switch these around. Okay, we now have them switched around. Same thing, we can hear it clicking. But there's no beep. So if we do this and do this, this is what it should sound like. But yeah, we got a bad relay. So I ordered up the proper relay. Of course, these things are expensive. They're like a hundred bucks for the proper one. Uh, what do you do? <laughs> but you know what? It is cheaper than a starter. Well, is there any suspicion as to why this relay isn't working? Uh, gross. <laughs> Note to self. Next time I grab a relay on my relay pile, yeah, make sure it works when you're throwing it in an awkward spot. Now, in my defense, 99.9 .9 times out of 100 when you're changing a relay, it's just literally right there, easy peasy. And well, you, you, you know pretty quick whether or not it works. Yeah, that's gross. Well, it appears I'm losing out on this relay game. And we can't get the proper relay until a day away, uh, maybe two days, and it's a hundred bucks. So I used one of the other relays that I have that is a known good and just broke down the 87A. That uh, should be fine. 
uh, at least, you know, test the theory, right? Best case scenario, it works. And you know what, or worst case scenario, I mean, worst case scenario, it works. And we just get the guy to come back when uh, the relay comes in, we can swap it out. But let's throw this in there. I'm sure I'm probably gonna need two hands for that. Let me attempt to throw that in there. And uh, I'll bring you back when I'm ready to try and start it. Yeah, <laughs> well, I got it in there. That's uh, it's harder than it looked at first. But we'll hope, we'll hope that's the whole story because that'd be nice. I still have to pull it out again to, when the new one arrives, but. All right, um, we're neutral again. Uh, parking brakes up, key, 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 key. Right here. Well, let's find out if it works. Wouldn't that be something? Hey! That's a good sound. Wow, there you go, folks. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Well, there you have it. Yeah, <laughs> I had a couple bad relays. Uh, you know, this one right here, of course, that's my fault. I uh, shouldn't have trusted one that, um, you know, probably sat outside in a box for a really long time. And this one here, whoa. This one here is just normal wear and tear, right? You get a couple times where it doesn't make a great connection, you get a buildup of resistance, uh, it creates heat, and then it burns up. Now, I used to work with a lot of people before at larger shops and when they had an electrical problem, the first thing that they would do is they just automatically go to the relay and just swap relays to one that's adjacent or a, a similar style. I still don't like doing that. I still don't think a person should start with that because what happens if all of a sudden everything works, you think it's just a bad relay, whereas it might've been an intermittent problem. You know. Uh, I don't like clouding your memory or your judgment before getting a baseline feel for the problem. So I always think you should do some basic testing uh, first rather than just blindly swapping relays. Um, however, you know, it wasn't long after I did this job, you know, a week or so after I had an 08 Honda Accord and wouldn't you know it, the relay, the air conditioning relay for that was bad. Now on this one here, I think that's a solid state relay but if uh hopefully that glare doesn't get can i prop that up a little bit maybe that's a little bit better but if we power that so right there is good turn that off hit it again 0.6 it's still pretty good 2.2 Two five. Okay, that's a good time. Yeah, it's good. It was giving me some huge, huge resistances before. Let's see if we can't get it to do that again, or it's just gonna. <laughs> well, isn't that the? Try tapping it. No, but hopefully you showed it. Few times is there, we got 1.3, 5.8. Give us some more taps. There we go. That's what it was doing before. Flying all over the place. Back down to two. Anyways, and back to being good again. Enough about that. Uh, for this one here, was well, just a matter of the relay. We got a um, uh, one of my relays here. I just grabbed another one like this, of course, one that was good, uh, and just ground off the 87A. It got the vehicle going for a day or two, and then they came back a few days later. We popped the original, the, the proper relay in, and everything has been hunky dory since. So, of course, if this were accessible on top in a normal fuse box, this would have been a super quick test. Could have found it out in, you know, three minutes tops. Could have tested the whole system. That's why I like testing at relays. So, uh, I just wanted to pass this on. 
Uh, let me know if you guys have this vehicle. Uh, have you encountered this on, sorry, it's this relay. Um, I don't know, maybe this one's prone to fail, right? So let me know what your experiences are. I love reading all your comments. And in the meantime, just wanna say thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.